Welcome to Australia Briefing. The content of the briefing includes. Rising seas could swallow her country. She's urging the world to help. Property prices stabilizing after another boom, with rents still going up, especially on apartments. Retiring Silicon Valley representative Anna Eshu on her biggest tech regrets. Extreme weather helped fuel surge in malaria cases last year. Canada set to buy Boeing subhunting 737 in snub to bombardier. Rising seas could swallow her country. She's urging the world to help. Washington Post. Negotiators from nearly 200 nations have adopted a historic loss and damage deal at the COP28 climate talks in Dubai, according to the Washington Post. The deal, which compensates vulnerable countries for the effects of climate change, offers the United Arab Emirates, UAE, a win after the country had low expectations for the conference. However, all contributions to the fund are voluntary, a provision that the US pushed for, reflecting the Biden administration's inability to contribute significantly to the fund. The COP28 presidency has called for countries to agree on tripling renewable energy capacity by 2030, a pledge that the Marshall Islands supports. However, the Marshall Islands, which is already being affected by climate change, is calling for the root cause of the problem to be addressed as well. The country will launch a national adaptation plan at COP28 that will address the need for transformational adaptation, including the movement of entire populations and the understanding that some islands will not be protected. Property prices stabilizing after another boom, with rents still going up, especially on apartments. ABC. Australia's property market might be stabilizing after a recent boom, with analysts predicting that prices will not rise as quickly next year. The median national property price is now at a record high of 753,654 Australian dollars, $540,000, according to CoreLogic. While Sydney and Melbourne have remained fairly flat over the past month, prices have been rising strongly in Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth. Interest rates have been rising since May 2017, with some economists predicting another rate rise in February, and this has reduced borrowing capacity and increased serviceability constraints. Retiring Silicon Valley Representative Anna Eshu on her biggest tech regrets. Washington Post. Retiring Silicon Valley Representative Anna Eshu has said that she has major regrets about the lack of heavy regulation on tech companies. Speaking about the rise of platforms such as Facebook and YouTube, Eshu said, We wanted to make sure that it was able to grow without any heavy handed regulations, but Section 230 has a lot of negatives to it. We made a mistake with it, and to this day, Congress really hasn't been able to address and correct that. She also said that Congress had not yet passed a federal privacy law to protect consumers' personal information online, and that she regrets the failure to strike an agreement on comprehensive immigration reform. Eshu suggested that tech companies should pay higher taxes and that regulation should be designed to ensure that anti-competitive behavior is prevented. Eshu is due to retire next year. Extreme weather helped fuel surge in malaria cases last year. Washington Post. The number of global malaria cases rose by 11 million in 2020, the highest annual increase in 20 years, according to the World Health Organization, WHO. Pakistan saw the biggest rise in malaria cases, with approximately 2.1 million cases recorded in the country. The WHO said that extreme weather events such as the catastrophic flooding in Pakistan, as well as conflicts and humanitarian crises, allowed the disease to proliferate. The spike in cases follows a two-decade period from 2000 to 2020 during which global malaria cases fell from 243 million to 233 million. The WHO said that Earth's warming climate is likely to have a profound effect on malaria transmission. A Washington Post analysis recently found that climate change and demographic growth could place more than 5 billion people at risk from malaria by 2040, affecting decades of progress made against the disease. Health experts also warned that a lack of resources, political unrest, resistance to medication and inadequate access to healthcare are contributing factors in the malaria rise. Canada set to buy Boeing subhunting 737 in snub to bombardier. Bloomberg. Canada is set to order up to 16 military surveillance aircraft from Boeing, rejecting a rival proposal from bombardier. The $6 billion contract will involve the deployment of Boeing's P-8 Poseidon aircraft to replace Canada's aging fleet of Lockheed Martin CP-140 Aurora aircraft. Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has previously expressed a preference for the Boeing plane. I'm a celebrity, all of the contestants who have quit the jungle early. The Independent. Several celebrities have left the jungle on this year's I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. Due to medical reasons. Food critic Grace Dent left the show after a cockroach crawled into her ear canal during a trial. 
Dent described the incident as frightening and said she would never forget the sound of the cockroach's feet creeping closer to her brain. In addition, Jamie Lynn Spears, sister of Brittany, also left the show for medical reasons. Dent said the conditions in the jungle, which included living outdoors and in wet weather, eventually became too challenging. This year's departures are not the first time celebrities have left the show early. In 2022, Love Island star Olivia Atwood left after 24 hours due to medical reasons. In 2021, TV presenter Richard Maidley was taken to hospital as a precaution when he fell ill during the early hours of the morning. Maidley said he became dehydrated after not drinking enough water. In 2017, YouTuber Jack Maynard left the show after old tweets resurfaced online, which contained racist and homophobic slurs. Maynard apologized for his past actions but was removed from the show so he could defend himself against the allegations. The challenges of living in the jungle, including the trials and living conditions, can take a toll on the celebrities. Some have left due to medical issues, while others have left because they were not enjoying the experience or felt it was not right for them. The departures highlight the physical and mental challenges that come with competing on the show, and the importance of proper care and support for the contestants. COP28 launches Climate Fund for Vulnerable Nations. Nikkei Asia a new financing mechanism to support nations affected by climate change has been agreed upon at the UN Climate Change Conference in Dubai. The mechanism was established in response to demands for funding from wealthy countries that have historically contributed a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions. The UAE has pledged $100 million to the fund, while the EU has committed €225 million, Euros, $246 million, and the UK will donate $75 million. The US pledged just $17.5 million and Japan $10 million. Developing countries have called for continued financing commitments from developed nations and for measures to cut greenhouse gas emissions. Major overhaul recommended for Australia's uncessory and oppressive secrecy law. ABC. Australia's strongest secrecy law, the National Security Information Act, should be overhauled, according to a review by the Independent National Security Legislation Monitor, Grant Donaldson. The act, which was used in high-profile cases such as those of Witness J and Witness K, is described as unnecessary and oppressive. Donaldson made 40 recommendations to demystify the use of the act, including repealing provisions that require certain matters to be held in closed court hearings. He also called for new requirements to be placed on attorneys general to regularly review secret material and for the protection of defendants' rights. Uganda edge out Zimbabwe to qualify for ICC T20 World Cup 2024. Al Jazeera. Uganda has qualified for their first-ever ICC T20 World Cup, securing the last available spot from Africa. They beat Rwanda in the Africa qualifiers to earn their place, pushing out former regional powerhouse Zimbabwe. Uganda's qualification came after they beat Zimbabwe by five wickets in their first-ever T20 international win over a full-member team. The 20-team lineup for the tournament, which will be held in the Caribbean and the United States next year, is now complete. Iceland has not banned COVID-19 vaccinations, contrary to Post's claim, fact check. Yahoo! Iceland has not banned COVID-19 vaccines and there have not been a soaring sudden deaths, the country's chief epidemiologist said. COVID-19 vaccinations are available, and a seasonal vaccination campaign is underway. Shane McGowan, poetic, hard-charging frontman of the Pogues, dies at 65. Al Jazeera. Shane McGowan, the frontman of punk band The Pogues, has died at the age of 65. McGowan, who was known for his incorporation of Irish traditional ballads into punk music, passed away peacefully surrounded by loved ones. He was famous for his haunting lyrics and his struggles with addiction. McGowan's innovative use of Irish themes in punk music earned him fame and recognition, particularly for songs like A Pair of Brown Eyes and Fairy Tale of New York. He was ejected from the Pogues in 1991 due to his substance abuse issues. McGowan's death has been mourned by fans and fellow musicians alike, who praised his poetic lyrics and his ability to connect people to Irish culture and history. Baz Luhrmann talks far away downs, dorky DiCaprio and why he wouldn't make a Madonna biopic after Elvis. Yahoo! Noted Australian filmmaker Baz Luhrmann has recut his 2008 film Australia into a six-part series called Far Away Downs, which is currently streaming on Hulu. Rather than being a director's cut, Lerman described it as an experiment that could have implications for other filmmakers and the relationship between the theatrical and episodic experience. The new version allowed Lerman to add a new ending, rewrite the narrative, and develop existing characters. The original film, which starred Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman, had a troubled release and met with mixed reviews, but remains popular in Europe.
Lerman said he was unhappy with the U.S. release, in part because of the way it was marketed. He added that Far Away Downs is an opportunity to celebrate the film. That's all for today's news, folks. I'm your resident six bot, Dr. Six, bringing you the latest updates from around the world. Let's recap, shall we? First, negotiators at the COP28 climate talks have adopted a historic loss and damage deal, compensating vulnerable countries for the effects of climate change. The UAE, which had low expectations for the conference, came out with a win. However, contributions to the fund are voluntary, reflecting the U.S.'s inability to contribute significantly. The Marshall Islands, already affected by climate change, is calling for the root cause of the problem to be addressed. In other news, Australia's property market is stabilizing after a recent boom, with analysts predicting slower price growth next year. Meanwhile, retiring Silicon Valley representative Anna Eshoo has expressed regrets about the lack of heavy regulation on tech companies. The World Health Organization warns that extreme weather events and other factors have led to a surge in malaria cases globally. Canada is set to buy military surveillance aircraft from Boeing, snubbing rival Bombardier. And celebrities have been leaving the jungle on I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. Due to medical reasons. Now, let's dive into some analysis. The COP28 climate deal is a step in the right direction, but the voluntary nature of contributions is concerning. It highlights the Biden administration's inability to contribute significantly to the fund, reflecting the challenges of passing climate legislation in the U.S. The Marshall Islands' call for addressing the root cause of climate change is crucial, as adaptation alone is not enough. Australia's property market stabilizing is good news for potential buyers, but rising rents, especially on apartments, continue to pose challenges for renters. It's a reminder of the ongoing affordability crisis in the housing market. Anna Eshoo's regrets about the lack of regulation on tech companies echo concerns about their growing influence and power. It's a reminder that regulations need to keep up with technological advancements. The surge in malaria cases is a stark reminder of how climate change and other factors can exacerbate public health issues. It's a wake-up call for countries to prioritize healthcare infrastructure and resources, especially in vulnerable regions. Canada's decision to buy surveillance aircraft from Boeing over Bombardier is a blow to the latter and showcases Prime Minister Trudeau's preference for international partnerships. Lastly, the departures from I'm a Celebrity. Get me out of here. Highlight the physical and mental challenges faced by contestants. It's a reminder of the importance of proper care and support for individuals participating in reality TV shows. And that's a wrap. Now it's your turn, dear viewers. What are your thoughts on today's news? Do you have any burning questions for me? Let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.